I'm Diane Wedner, LifeScript.com. Welcome to House Calls. Today, common sense advice from the doctor who literally wrote the book on how to live longer. Dr. David Agus is a leading cancer specialist and researcher and author of the New York Times best-selling book, A Short Guide to a Long Life, a topic everyone's interested in. He joins me now. Welcome, Dr. Agus. Hi, Diane. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Let's get down to some basics here. Sure. What is your short list of things that women and all people should do to get a sense of their general health and well-being? You are in charge of you. Collect all of your data, put it in one place. Make your data available. Most of us get sick you know, at 9 o'clock at night on a Friday night, and our records are in our doctor's office. If it's on the web, you can access it and bring it anywhere. And so I can, on my iPhone, pull up from the cloud my last chest x-ray, my EKG. And if something goes wrong, I show it to the emergency room. Makes an enormous difference in one's health. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest determinants of health is movement over time. So we used to think it was an hour at the gym every day. That was what made you healthy. And then we went to work. Well, the sad truth is, if you sit for five hours a day, it's equivalent on a health basis of smoking a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. Sitting for five hours is the same as smoking a pack of cigarettes. So I want you to move more. So I wore one of those bracelets that look at movement over time. And so I was shocked how much I was sitting. So I redesigned my life because I had the data. So I have a treadmill desk. So for two hours a day when I'd be doing emails, I'm actually walking at my desk doing them. One meeting a day, I tell someone, let's go for a walk. Very good. And so I've designed my life based on my data. We all need to be in charge of our own data. What are some of the worst, most egregious mistakes people make in terms of their health that have a big impact on them? Well, most people don't think about health till they get sick. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to think early and focus on prevention. It's very easy through food to get enough nutrients so you're not vitamin deficient. That being said, when you have a diet of fast food and lots of carbs, et cetera, it's not a healthy thing. We know that. In the only large randomized study to show a benefit of one diet versus another, one diet won. And it's called the Mediterranean diet. So it's fruits, fruits vegetables, cold mm -hmm. water fish, chicken, a few times a week beef. It's moderation. It's some of everything. And it's good food. And so when you start to look at that, that's what works. Stay away from the processed food. When you go to the supermarket, don't go to the middle. Stay on the outside and get what's fresh there. Is it okay to have treats sometimes? Sure. I mean, listen, we all, but there's a treat and there's a treat. You can have a piece of cake or you can have a piece of cake. You can have a sheet so cake, it looks like. The key <laughs> yes. is moderation. And it's some right. of everything. What are some of the things that women are doing that are good for them? They're running around all the time, which is fantastic. <laughs> you know, if someone says, well, listen, my life is just running on the move. I'm running from here to here to here. I say that's the greatest thing you could do for your health. Our bodies were designed to move. Our lymphatics that control our immune system have no muscle in their wall. So it's the rhythmic contraction of the muscles in your legs when you walk that actually make your body work. So we need to move. You know, none of us listen to our body. It's talking to us all the time. If you're a 30-year-old and your back's starting to hurt, that's a message there. Your body's talking to you, saying, you got 60 more years in that spine. Unless you act now, you ain't going to enjoy them like you should. And maybe you need to focus a little bit more on the yoga or the stretching or things to build up that back. How can we, as you describe it, find your ohm at work? Right. Um, is there well, a way What's finding to... what's right for you? Um... Is that, you know, for me, I know I need that downtime. And so I need, I need to build in the end of the morning, I have a half hour when I'll just read science papers or read the newspaper, something that's going to get that downtime for me. I'll take a walk in the afternoon. And in the end, it helps me function better and do more. You need to know your body best. You know, there are now companies in Los Angeles here that are building meditation studios within the company. So you can take a break and go for 15 minutes and meditate and then go back to work. I think it's fantastic. So for people who claim they never get sick um, and say, I don't want to get vaccines and I don't need a physical exam. What is, what is your advice to them? What do you want to say to them? I'm saying it's crazy. I want to hit you in the head is that if you're exposed to a virus, you will get it. Right? None of us are immune to every viral disease or bacteria or anything out there. And so if you had it as a child, you won't get it again, right? You get each virus once. But the data are very clear is that we can prevent disease by getting these vaccines. And to the parents who don't vaccinate their children because of fear of things like autism, again, to me, it's unconscionable. The data are very clear. Vaccines don't cause autism. When we have cases of measles that can be deadly, 
The child is the one who suffers. That's all excellent information, and your book is eminently readable. Thank you so much for that. So the good news is, it's quite possible to live a long, healthy life. And even better, it's not that hard. Thank you so much for being with me today, Dr. Agus. This has been House Calls for LifeScript.com. I'm Diane Wedner. Mm -hmm.